uh, convolution layer 1 so part 1 it is uh, because it's a big topic I am able to cover it only in two videos so let us now quickly move on to what about its introduction so you have already come across what exactly do you mean by convolution so uh, the first layer or the base layer of any net convolutional neural network uh, is convolutional layer and this layer is exactly which is response which is re this layer is responsible for determining whatever features are there in that image okay so you whenever you want to determine the features of the pattern of a particular pixels that are uh, grouped together inside an image whenever you are working with your input data as an image then you will be using the first layer as your convolutional layer you will be keeping on using this convolutional layer unless and until all the features elements of your image has been extracted so what exactly is happening here is uh, as I already discussed in my previous sessions also what are we doing is uh, you know uh, the input image is actually taken so you have some uh, you know let's say 1024 by 1024 size of pixels wherein you have input as your image right so this particular image is actually passed through a filter that we call it as a kernel so we take kernel size as small so as we so as to you know extract as many features as possible so suppose i have taken here 3 by 3 kernel size then this 3 by 3 kernel is kept onto this particular uh, place of your input image where we call that particular place as a receptive field whichever field of the input which receives your filter or the kernel so then what happens I already explained the receptive field uh, pixels and the kernel pixel values they are all convolved uh, with each other convolution operation takes place that is multiplication of uh, uh, or the dot product of the pixel elements and then the cumulative uh, result of it okay so once you have determined that what results is uh, what we get as a uh, finalized output that uh, the map function that we get it and what results here is these nine filters features will be extracted into a dimension of one by one pixel so that's how the dimension of your input is reduced drastically by using the operation of convolution but then also the entire feature patterns are also getting extracted with the help of convolution that's the beauty of convolution so what do you do here is the input image is passed through a filter which gives the feature map as the output so whatever is the resultant of the convolution of your receptive field pixels and your kernel pixels is your feature map so this feature map is exactly extracting the feature pattern from your image but also it is also helping you to reduce the dimension of the input elements so that you know as I told you already uh, any classification ANN artificial neural network that performs classification cannot process so many elements together so what exactly is this convolution layer helping you it is helping you to especially uh, to reduce the dimension of your image and also it is helping you to extract the feature elements of this particular image and then making it possible for the classification artificial neural network to classify it like how it does so it is actually like you know the prefix that you are giving it to a normal ANN and making it suitable to work with image data so that's how in a simple language I can explain you okay now this convolution layer it applies some kernels that will be sliding through the pattern to extract low and high level features in the pattern so I already explained you in the components of convolution how the lower and the higher level features edges are etc they are uh, determined with the help of uh, applying multiple convolution layers so this particular layer is very very important in convolution neural network as the name itself is convolution neural network it will be using kernels or filters and they keep on sliding throughout the image unless and until entire image is covered and you extract a feature map out of it now suppose after this first layer you are thinking that the feature map is still high in dimension and you think you have extracted low level features now you want to go for medium level features then again one more layer of convolution you are going to put 
and again you will select certain filter elements of this particular convolution layer and again you will get a reduced dimensionality. So suppose in a layman's language if I want to explain then this is what is happening inside a convolution you take a bigger image you pass it through first layer of convolution so you get a little spatially reduced in the dimension image but features are intact suppose say lower level features are extracted and then say you have got convolution next features are extracted little low and then finally after another layer say I get my desired n by n size this n by n size if it is suitable uh, for classification then you will pass on through a normal ANN that performs a classification and then you get a final classification as your output. So this is exactly why there is a need for convolution reduces the dimension of the image yet extracts the entire features out of this pixel by pixel pattern and give you proper information and extracts all the features which are involved in this specially arranged pixels for you and finally get your classification possible. So that's how a CNN exactly works with the help of convolution layer. Okay. Now, uh, let me go to the next slide. So, there are different types of um, convolutional layers that I can uh, speak on. The first one is being a single channel input and a single convolution kernel. Okay. So, for this what I am assuming, I am assuming a 2D image data. Now, in that 2D image data, I am assuming that the input feature is going to map X of the convolution layer. So, the convolution layer, it has a height of H and a width of W. Okay. And uh, let the number of channels be input channels be C in. Okay. And let the number of the output channels be C out. Okay. And the generated feature map that you get, the output after the convolution, you can have it of a different height and width. Let's say H dash and W dash. Okay. So, input features, they are X. And these input feature has got a height and a width of H, W and W and the number of channels that are present inside it, let's say they are C in. After you perform the convolution, you get a separate uh, dimension of image and let that be H dash and W dash and whatever resultant output channels, you call it a C out. Okay, so that's the basic uh, terminology with which we are proceeding here. Suppose I am calling it as a single channel input, then you will not see here multiple uh, you know channels all you can see is only one single input image so that's how c in is going to be one there's only one channel and of course the output is also going to be one and i have a single convolution kernel so that's the dimension that i am talking about here so let us see what you can do with this so you can see here very clearly in a pictorial image format it is as simple as the simple convolution that i have discussed to you so far so suppose this is your input image and I, if I say this is 5 by 5, kernel size is 3 by 3, then you can see after convolution again I got 3 and 3. So you can see the height and the width H and W and I have taken here C in as 1. The output that I get is H dash and Y dash, sorry W dash and uh, output channel is also 1 and I have already selected certain kernel here of a 3 by 3 size. So what you are expecting here is the output size H dash and W dash is exactly as same as the kernel size that I have selected. Okay. So the output size and the kernel size are going to be same. This kernel keeps on sliding onto this uh, receptive uh, area of the image and gives you the output. So suppose, uh, you know, for an example, uh, what we are doing here is suppose I want to take a, the kernel is getting mapped on this. So element by element you please multiply minus 1, huh? minus 1 and then a 0, correct? And then again you have minus 1 and then a plus 2 and then a, you know plus 6, okay? And then you have a 0 and then you have, a, sorry, minus 2, minus 2 it is and then you have a plus 4. So what you get here is 2, 8, 2, 10, 10, minus 3, what you get is 7, exactly. So this is how you are calculating your uh, element by element mapping which is, you know, present over here and you slide and you get the next thing. So that's how, you know, you just slide it over and get the next picture. You just slide it over and you get the next picture. 
uh, next picture so this is these dashes are uh, just mean uh, means of a representation telling earlier it was 5 by 5 but what you get after sliding is a 3 by 3 which is equivalent to the size of the kernel that you have selected i hope it makes sense so that's your first type which is single channel input and single convolution kernel which is so far uh, you have already seen in exactly determining convolution little bit complicated would be the next one which we call it as a multi channel input and a single uh, convolution kernel so what i am doing here is a uh, there are three channels so for an example this is a brilliant example of it would be a color image so color image has got three primarily primary colors which is red green and blue and pixel values on each of them will go will you know add up together and give you what exactly resultant color is present in an image okay so whenever you are dealing with a multi channel input for an example a color image with three channels of red green and blue and then you apply a single convolution kernel then what is happening the output uh, you know you are using a single convolution kernel but there are multiple channels so then the convolution operation which is going to happen it is going to extend to handle each channel separately this is also known as a depth wise convolution let us see this in detail so in this case what is happening in multiple channel that you can see over here there are three red green and blue huh? three channels and then you are applying a cult kernel say 5 by 5 for an example was the input uh, h and w h dash and w dash is again say 3 by 3 then what is going to happen here is this particular uh, convolution is happening across these three channels and then giving you a cumulative result here as this one pixel I hope you got it. So, in case of multi-channel input, the number of channels of convolution kernel needs to match the number of channel of inputs. So, the ith channel of convolution kernel and ith channel of input x, they are calculated and it gives you the first intermediate matrix. Okay, so it's just like first R channel is taken and it is convolved and it gives you an R channel matrix, say 3 by 3 R channel. Similarly, you get a green matrix 3 by 3. You know, green channel is taken and convolved, you get a green matrix. And then you take a blue matrix, okay. Finally, you get all the three results like how you have done in a single channel input and a single convolution kernel. Now, what is happening is, what you would do is, the you know all of these cumulative result is taken the result of this first channel output say green, green channel output and blue channel output they are all added together to give you a final result of 3 by 3 so that is going to be represented here so this is how a multi channel input and a single convolution kernel works i hope you are clear with this so now let's see this in detail little bit here in the pictorial representation which will make sense to you so what i am assuming here is again a 5 by 5 channel let's say this is a red channel this is a green channel and this is a blue channel all the dimensions are same 5 by 5 and say i have selected a single kernel of size 3 by 3 so now what is going to happen it is going to individually take as i said red channel as we have calculated previously you calculated by yourself the first element came as 7 through the green channel the element came as minus 11 and through the blue channel it came as minus 1 now what are you going to put it as your final answer 7 minus 11 minus 1 that is going to be minus 5 so that's the answer here for your resultant feature map when you are using a multi-channel input and a single convolution i hope i am clear to you in its working now let's go for the other one uh, i think i have uh, done it for you uh, just for your information you know properly you just apply the mathematical uh, dot product and cumulative sums and you get your final answer uh, this is like a homework to you please try to do it on your own and try to verify the results as present onto the screen now i am moving on to the next type which is multi channel input and multi convolution kernel okay so here it is what it is like when you have got multiple channels as well as there are multiple kernels or multiple filters which are applying so what is going to happen here the output matrix in the channel dimension are going to uh, be like stack operation they are going to stitch together to make a new dimension we have to understand it in a better way so let's understand it in this way so you can see here what is happening uh, you can see here very clearly 
um, there have you have got you know multi convolution kernels are there so you have got say multi channel image red green and blue is again i'm taking and then you are applying this to a kernel one this is the first type of a kernel and then the same channel that you are to, uh, taking you are applying it to a kernel 3 okay so now what is happening there are n number of kernels okay so you are applying to each of your channel so what is going to happen is this part is going to be taken and calculated as a multi channel and a single kernel this part is again taken as a multi channel and a single kernel and final result after you get all these kernels they are all you know stacked up together stitched together and their cumulative result is taken as your final pixel feature map i hope i'm making sense to you guys okay so very simple it is uh, you are just going to stitch up the resultant kernel values that you get after you perform convolution with each and every kernel that has been uh, taken into account okay so now uh, I think uh, I have covered uh, different types of uh, uh, channel inputs and kernels for a convolution layer 1. So, we have seen here single channel input. This is your single channel input and single convolution kernel. This is your multi-channel input and single convolution kernel. And this is your multi-channel uh, multi input and a multi-convolution kernels. I hope the working is clear. We are going to see the remaining aspects of the convolution layer in our next topic. That's it for now.